Hello and welcome to Inside Indiana Business. I'm Gary Dick. Hoosier lawmakers getting down to business. Gathering this week for the ceremonial organization day to kick off the 2023 legislative session and also swear in members for the 123rd General Assembly. They have a big task at hand, writing a new two-year state budget. Now in July, the state ended its fiscal year with $6.1 billion in reserves. Plenty of big issues will be vying for funding this session with big implications for the future of the state's economy. Among the biggest, workforce, education, and health care. They'll all be hotly debated topics. And there's the possibility that social issues could once again be on the agenda. To make some sense of it all, I'm pleased to be joined, as always, by IndiePolitics.org publisher Abdul Hakim Shabazz. Abdul, uh, welcome to the show. Always good to be here, my friend. Uh, lots of issues we can talk about, but everything will be overshadowed, I guess, by the budget uh, and uh, debate on, uh, on where to spend money. Uh, exactly. Uh, India has a lot of uh, financial obligations that has to deal with already. Also, uh, potentially some new obligations. For example, the governor's uh, health care commission have recently unveiled a plan uh, spending about $250 million annually uh, to address who's your health care costs and uh, build up our health care infrastructure. Uh, lawmakers are a little skeptical about uh, whether they really need that much money, so that'll be a big issue. Obviously, education funding will be an issue. Paying down uh, Indiana's debt, uh, which once again frees up more money uh, for more programs as well. So, so lots of budgetary issues will be out there. You mentioned education, and uh, I know you had a conversation at the State House uh, this week. Uh, uh, talk about quote unquote rethinking K twelve education. What did you make of that? Uh, yes, it's interesting because it's all part of sort of the sort of the workforce uh, development situation that Indiana finds itself in. In addition to uh, attracting new talent and keeping talent, we also have to sort of build up our workforce. Because as you know, as well as anyone, we have these major big job announcements popping up all over the place, high tech, high skill, high wages, but we don't necessarily have the workforce uh, to fill those positions. So I know that's one thing that a lot of lawmakers are gonna be looking at sort of rethinking that K through 12 uh, model. And also uh, bringing the business community, uh, getting the business community a lot more involved as well with, with internships and, and certifications and that sort of thing. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what exactly lawmakers unveil uh, to revamp K through 12 education, but they're sort of rethinking that. Also, uh, they want to rethink uh, higher ed. Uh, also, uh, basically, higher ed does seem to have the have the, the the perception that higher ed doesn't have the value that it used to. So they want to uh, bring higher ed into the conversation and talk to them as well. Yeah, we talk about workforce because, as you say, it is such a, a huge issue. Uh, there's a lot of talk that Intel going to uh, Ohio with that big $20 billion investment that workforce may have kept Indiana from getting that. Do you sense that lawmakers feel a sense of urgency to deal with that workforce uh, issue? Uh, yes, I, I think so. And, and this year, uh, more than ever, like I said, uh, we got money in the bank, so uh, that's not necessarily a big issue. Uh, we got a health care cost that had to be addressed, but also that workforce development is, is important for Indiana, not just for this year, but for 15, 10, 20 years uh, down the road. And it's good to see lawmakers start to start doing some long term thing like, hey, what do we want the state to look like, say, in 2030? And so by skilled up that workforce now, it goes a long way uh, to solving those issues and alleviate those problems down the road. OK, you mentioned health care, uh, uh, health care costs, the, the health of, of Hoosiers. Expect another uh, a push to increase the cigarette tax? Um, yes, there, there will be. Uh, I know the House has passed a couple of them, so that's going to be on the Senate side of things. We don't know what the new caucus, uh, where, where they are yet uh, on the cigarette tax. Uh, like I said, earlier this week at a legislative panel, uh, Senator Bray, who's the head of the Senate, said we have to talk to his caucus and see sort of where, where they are. But, but a past performance is indicative of future earnings. Uh, it's not likely. As we wrap up, Abdul, uh, as you look at any social issues, certainly abortion has been a hot topic, a hot button issue. Do you anticipate uh, social issues could could uh, creep into the conversation? Uh, that's always possible. I don't think the abortion issues, I think the abortion is going to stay packed for right now, particularly with the Supreme Court uh, hearing arguments, making a decision uh, later the, later in the spring. I think from that perspective, things will be fine. But, there, but it's the Indiana General Assembly. There are always these social issues that pop up. The question is, uh, do they get a hearing and do they do they do the do what I call the February surprise and sort of <laughs> right. suck up all the oxygen, nitrogen and uranium 236 out of the room? That, my friend, still remains to be seen. All right. Abdul Hakeem Shabazz, as always, busy time of year for you. I know you're looking forward to it and we'll be checking in with you throughout the session. Thanks. I never knew a reporter could be so happy, my friend. <laughs> all right. We'll talk to you later.